Scalars and Vectors Physical quantities can be categorized into two main quantities, vectors and scalars. A scalar quantity can be defined as a quantity that has magnitude but no direction. Examples of scalar quantities Speed Volume Temperature Distance and mass. A vector quantity is a physical quantity that has both magnitude and direction. Examples of vector quantities include displacement, velocity, force. Acceleration Representing vectors and scalars. In physics generally, we represent any physical quantity with a symbol, such as t for time. We differentiate between scalars and vectors quantities by writing the vector quantities in boldface type, while scalar quantities are written in italic. For example, to represent a bird that flies with 3.5 meters per second to the northeast. The speed of a bird is written as v equals 3.5 meters per second, but the velocity which indicates a direction is written as v equals 3.5 meters per second to the northeast. Another way to distinguish between vectors and scalars is by drawing an arrow above the abbreviation for the vector quantity. To summarize, scalar quantity represented by writing it in italic, while vector quantity either represented by writing it in bold face or with an arrow on top of the abbreviation. Representing vectors in a graph. Vectors can be presented in a graph by an arrow, where the length of the arrow is proportional to the vector magnitude, and the arrow direction represents the vector's direction. As we mentioned earlier, each vector must have a magnitude and a direction. The vector magnitude must be proportional to the vector quantity, and we achieve this by adopting a drawing scale, which makes it reasonable to represent any physical quantity. When choosing a scale, you are free to choose the drawing scale that you think is suitable for you. For the vector's direction, it is agreed that the four directions can be presented as follow on the graph. Up indicates north. Down indicates south. Right indicates east. Left indicates west. To explain the idea, consider an object moved to the north 100 meters from its original point. To represent the object displacement. First, choose a scale, in this example, I choose the 10 meters represented by 1 centimeter on the graph, so the 100 meters could be represented by 10 centimeters on the graph. And the direction is pointing up. Another example, to represent the velocity of a moving car to the east with 30 meters per second. First, choose a drawing scale, in which you decide how much each 1 centimeter on the graph represents from the vector quantity. In this example, I use the drawing scale 1 cm equals 5 m per second which means every 1 cm I draw on my graph represents a velocity of 5 m per second, as the velocity is 30 m per second, then it can be presented by finding how many centimeters equivalent to it. By dividing 30 by 5, and the answer is 6 cm, so the 30 m per second is equivalent to an arrow with a length of 6 cm on the graph. Secondly, indicate the direction of the arrow in the graph. As mentioned in the question, the direction is to the east. This means that the arrow that represents the velocity points to the right. Drawing vectors. To represent vectors in a graph in an accurate way, we use a ruler and protractor. The ruler used to measure the vector length, while the protractor used to indicate the vector's direction. For example, to draw a vector that has a length of 15 centimeters, making angle 60 with the x-axis. We start first by indicating the point, where we want the vector tail to be located. Usually, it's the origin of the xy coordinate system. Secondly, measure an angle that measures 60 with the x-axis. Make sure you measure the angle in an anti-clockwise direction. This angle represents the vector direction. Thirdly, now we have two points indicate the vector direction. By using the ruler and by starting from the first point in the origin of the xy coordinate system. We measure a line that passes the two point where its length equal to 15 centimeters. Finally, draw the arrowhead to indicate the direction. Resultant vector. The resultant vector represents the sum of two or more vectors. 
when adding vectors, you must make certain that they have the same units and describe similar quantities. We can add vectors graphically. And to do this, we need to redraw our vectors. In adding vectors graphically, we need to follow the following steps to get the correct answer. First, redraw the first vector by making sure the vector you draw has the same magnitude and direction. Then, draw the second vector starting from the head of the first vector by drawing the second vector on the head of the first vector as we follow the rule tail to head when we add vectors graphically. We keep following the same rule until we draw all vectors. Next, the resultant vector which represents the answer for the vector's addition is drawn from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector. The tail of the resultant vector located on the tail of the first vector and the head of the resultant vector located on the head of the last vector. Finally, we measure the resultant vector magnitude by the ruler and its direction by the protractor. Example? Consider a student walking 1600 meters to a friend's house in a direction that makes 45 degrees with the x-axis. And then 1200 meters to school in a direction that makes an angle of 135 with the x-axis. To find the resultant vector for the student's movement, which represents his displacement, we need first to use a scale, such as 100 on land equals 1 centimeter on paper. Find each vector depending on the scale. So the first one is equal to 1600 divided by 100 equals 16 centimeters. The second one equals 1200 divided by 100, and this equals 12 centimeters. Now draw the vector that represents the student's displacement from his house to his friend's house with a vector length which equals 16 centimeters and making angle 45 degrees with the x axis. We start first by indicating an angle of 45 degrees with the x axis. Then, we draw a line from the origin point that passes the point that indicates 45 degrees with the x-axis. Next, draw the vector representing his walk to the school, starting with the tail at the head of the first vector. By using the protractor, indicate an angle of 135 degrees with the x-axis. Finally, draw a line 12 centimeters from the head of the first vector that passes the point that indicates the angle 135 degrees. The resultant vector can be found by using the ruler to indicate its magnitude. Measure the length of the vector pointing from the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector. The length of that vector can then be multiplied by 100 or whatever scale you have chosen to get the actual magnitude of the student's total displacement in meters. The direction of the resultant vector can be determined by using a protractor to measure the angle between the resultant vector and the x-axis, or between the resultant and any chosen reference line.